today we want to try to help improve your pumping technique. We're going to break pumping down, understand how it really works, and figure out if we can truly fly forever. We've enlisted the help of some friends. Eirik Bachman is a PhD in hydrodynamics and is the CEO of a company called Wavefoil that produces foils for large vessels. He's a foiler and over the last few months has become my teacher and friend. Our second accomplice is Todd Reichert. Todd is not only a flapping flight expert and aerodynamics PhD, he's a celebrity in the human-powered flight community. Todd and his team have a human-powered land speed record at nearly 90 miles per hour. He's also developed an airplane with flapping wings and he's pedaled his way into the air as a human flyer. So can we fly forever? Last summer I pumped a foil for two and a half minutes. I was exhausted. If you look at a human on a bike, there's a relationship between the max power they can exert for a given time. As the power goes up, you can't do it for very long, but if the power drops, you can do it for much longer. If I reduce my power on a bike by just 25%, I could probably bike for 30 minutes. If we could figure out how to design a foil that would reduce the power we need to pump it by just 25%, we might be able to pump for 30 minutes, which is almost six miles. I can't imagine how cool that would be. But how do you do it? It's all about reducing drag and thus reducing the power you need to overcome it. So how much power is needed to overcome drag? The total amount is shown at the top and it's made up of everything listed here. Most of the drag comes from the front wing and in blue and red, you can see that. But before you fly, you can see in green that the board drags as well. But thankfully that disappears once the mass rays out of the water. What's interesting here is that if you add it all up, there's a minimum, a sweet spot that you probably want to fly at, and we think it's pretty close to the ideal pumping speed. Pumping a foil is more like flapping flight. How do we figure that out? Well, Todd showed us how, and now we need two more factors to line up with our speed. The amplitude, speed, and frequency to line up, right? Yeah. Like that, would you say that that gets you like an extra 10% or that's, or that's like a huge Breakthrough. Then that's it, the icing? I think it's like 50%. We think it matters a lot, and it's the difference between pumping for 30 seconds and pumping for more than two minutes. It's all about how efficiently you can propel the foil, and this is the holy grail for foil pumping. So to figure this out, we need to go deeper and figure out the forces being applied in each frame. And that is what Todd was able to do with a program called Canovia. So he turned me into a stick man, and with a good video of pumping, we could see in each frame how my body moved and the force put into the foil. Each pump takes about 0.6 seconds, so this all happens very quickly. There's four phases. Let's call them drive, float, climb, and load. Drive the nose down with front foot force. Float at the lowest elevation and pitch up with a flick of your back foot. Climb by bringing legs up and being weightless as the board rises. And load the board by leveling it and preparing to drive. Drive, float, climb, and load. This is the force at my feet over many pumps. Two adjacent peaks or two adjacent drives. The drive force is around 2G, that's twice my body weight. The entire drive is only 0.13 seconds, so it's short, and it's an enormous burst of energy. During the drive, the nose is pitched down, so the lift is not just up, it's a bit forward. So if you push down hard on the board, you can generate more thrust. Think about creating a short, powerful burst that's front foot dominated while swinging your arms up and extending your body. The float phase begins with the mast at its lowest point and the board closest to the water. This phase also begins once we're at 1G and that's when we go weightless. We conserve energy and relax our bodies. We level the board out and sweep from pitch down to pitch up in a swift flick action. At max pitch angle, the climb phase begins. By the end, your arms are minimum height. You accept the force of the board with your back foot. Because the nose is pitched up, the lift force on the front wing will be pointing up and a little bit back, so this actually slows you down. So in this phase, you're better to be light, as weightless as possible. The final phase is called the load. It begins at max elevation. In this phase, you can serve energy and reload your legs after weightlessness. It feels like landing on the board. You level the board and sweep from pitch up to down, and you prepare your arms to swing through like readying to jump. But don't begin the drive until the nose is pitched down. And here's a summary of each of the phases if you want to refer to them later. 
So how do you put this all together? And before you start refining your pumping into these precise actions, there's four steps I'd recommend you try to get started. Number one, practice level flight. Find the angle of attack at that speed, there's only one. Practice riding with the board high above the water with the wing close to the surface and then the board just above the water. Practice the pumping motion. Rise up and down, practicing load, drive, float, and climb. Try to do these in equal amounts and try to complete all four in under a second. Remember, the ideal frequency is one to two pumps per second. Number three, start pumping. See if you can accelerate and create slack in the rope. And number four, fly. See if you can reach 10 pumps without losing lift. Let go of the rope. Try for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, and a minute. When I first pumped a foil less than three years ago, I could have never imagined pumping for a minute, let alone more than two minutes. I'm convinced we can do more and I'm anxious to see what the 2021 season will bring. Maybe 30 minutes is possible. If you'd like to send us clips to review, we'd be happy to provide feedback. I believe 30 minutes of pumping will be possible. That's nearly endless flight. It will require two things, a reduction in power demand with improvements in equipment and an efficient pumping technique. Both matter. With practice, our bodies learn to pump more efficiently, and I hope these tips can help you unlock endless flight on a foil.